there's a number of different elephants that I can see on both sides of the road and I'm hoping that if we spend some time with them we maybe just maybe might make it all the way down towards Chitwa it's a long way from here but you never know they're heading in that general vicinity and a herd like this down at the dam would be spectacular if they got there just as the sun was setting because it would be wonderful light down there and hopefully it's warm enough that they might even start playing in the water itself and we've really enjoyed watching the Ellie's at Chitra. They've swam many times for us, and it's always interesting watching these guys go deep into the water and play and push each other around. It's a phenomenal thing to watch. Although it looks like they're changing course a little bit and heading more towards the east, which is into Torchwood. Now, Senzo, I'm going to just reverse back so that they cross the road in front of us because the rest of the herd is starting to come from our left hand side so you'll see there's a few of them there and then there's a whole bunch of them starting to come now from the bushes and it is a monstrous herd i don't know where they were hiding during the day to the well during this morning's drive but it is a lot of them and there's lots already on our like i say on our right hand side so inside torchwood already so i'm just going to go quite far back because i'm hoping that they're going to start filing out in front of us and we'll get most of the herd crossing in our direction but that female there is very unique you can see she's got a massive tear in her ear so there's a big 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 v shape that's been torn out and you can see actually where the the remainder of the ear is flapping down there that would have been very painful now linda you're wondering at what age do ellies get their teeth well they are born and soon after the teeth start to come out it's within the first three months they're starting to show signs of those teeth coming through and then from there on you'll find that the teeth are out and exposed and they're starting to use them. The reason why they don't need teeth too early is because, well, they have milk that they can suckle on. So at three months, you start to see the little showings of them. And then from there, they push forward. And eventually, you'll find that they are out completely exposed just after that. So, And the tooth, when it's the first set of teeth that they get in those, in those first few years are tiny little teeth they very small in comparison to what they'll have when they are much older so they have these tiny small little round almost pebble like teeth and then by the time they reach fully grown adults it's almost a massive bar of rigid huge dental structure that is protruding out of the mouth so it's quite cool to see how the teeth themselves grow not only the elephants but like I said this herd is huge I can see a whole bunch more now starting to come out they really are a big 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 unit Jamie Oklahoma you're wondering why we never see ox peckers on elephants well Jamie the reason is is elephants are very very good at keeping themselves clean so there's not enough parasites to warrant the ox peckers landing on them they also have this trunk and they have these ears that causes them to be able to flap and make a lot of movement and that disrupts the ox peckers quite often so it's unfortunately the reason why they don't it's also they don't have much hair and so not really in great places for the ox peckers to find parasites you need hair for parasites to cling on to and then get into the skin and you will find the odd tick on an elephant but it's really in such low numbers that the ox peckers don't really are not really able to find a, a massive food source and there's much easier animals to feed off like impalas, nyalas, kudu, um, buffalo, rhinos and all of the others so that's why you don't see too many of them there. Now you can see they're crossing over just a burnt section so for those of you that are new viewers to Safari Live this section was burnt fairly recently it's called a fire break so it's burnt on purpose it's a controlled burn that's done to make sure that if there is a fire on the left side of the road that it doesn't jump to the right side and we don't get too many areas being completely um, burnt and completely destroyed so that's why they burn them and it's just basically to break a fire if it did come along but look at this there's just elephants appearing everywhere out of the bush Paul, you're wondering how much a baby elephant will weigh? Well, when it's at birth, will be anywhere between a 100 kilograms and 150 kilograms. So between sort of 200 and 300 pounds at birth, which is, as you can imagine, a rather large animal to get out of 
the system and so it's a very difficult process for a female elephant and she becomes a little bit on the cranky side when she does give birth and it really is quite something to watch. I have been fortunate enough to see the right at the tail end of a of a birth just as the baby dropped and it I can tell you is quite something. That poor female I feel sorry for her in those situations. And you can see they're just a little bit weary now because there's a car in front of us and they're not 100% sure whether they want to cross between the cars or if they're going to come behind us. I think they've opted to rather come behind us at this stage. Listen to the little one talking at once book. <laughs> oh, I know James is saying that that was especially exciting as the enemies were approaching there. We don't realize how fortunate we are here at Juman in the Sabi Sands and Greater Kruger Park region. We have a high density of elephants to start with and on top of that a lot of our elephants are fairly relaxed and we get a lot of intimate close encounters with our eddies around the vehicles, lots of interaction of big herds and it really takes you going away from this area to realize just how fortunate we are when we see herds of this magnitude moving around. At the end of the day a lot of the reserves in the world are losing elephants and not the populations are not growing so to be in a place like this is always very special. The only other place I've been to that really returned, well two actually, there's two other places I've been to that really is just elephant heaven. One is the Chobi River up in Botswana. The, it is absolutely insane the number of elephants that are up there. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them that spread around on the river system in the dry season, so it really is quite incredible. And then if you go um, up to Savo East National Park, that's just incredible because of the sheer size of some of those elephant bulls there. There's a lot of the last remaining 100 pounder elephants are in that area and they are magnificent individuals to see. Now look at this tiny little baby. Isn't it cute? <laughs> That's still very little, that one. I would say it's under a year old at this stage. Look, it's just going to greet the other big one. Hello, who are you? A little elephant handshake, putting trunks in each other's mouths. It's just to check who everybody is, make sure that they all know each other. A little greeting, so it's much like when lions will put their heads together in a bond. It's the exact same thing. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Eleanor, you're wondering about Fang, and I think you and many others, including myself, are wondering where she is, what's happened to her, is she okay? At this stage, still no news, I'm afraid, and no, we have not seen any sign of her, haven't heard anything about her, haven't seen any photos of her, so I'm not sure where she is at the moment. I'm hoping that she's going to make an appearance soon. We have started to see some big herds coming back into this area, which should mean that a lot of more elephants should start coming, and hopefully Fang's herd will be one of them now. There's this big female that's just sitting straight behind Senzo at the moment. Hello, girl. Are you coming to say hello? Isn't this spectacular? I could do this all day, every day, sit amongst these guys. There's something about spending time with Ellie's that is magical in every single way possible. Let's see, there's a bit of dusting going on, the sun is setting in the background. This is not just the most beautiful scene to see all of these Ellie's together. Now no bulls funny enough that I've seen yet. I was I would think in a s elephant herd this size that there would have been some big bulls but at this stage none that I can see. Ooh, Jackie you're wondering if elephants will get upset if lions come around. Most certainly, Jackie. If lions had to pitch up now, they will be sent scuttling to the hills. These elephants will chase them as quick as possible, try and get rid of them, make sure that those lions know that they are the boss and that they are in control of what's going on. And so you will find that lions will be sent packing by this herd. Now, Senzo, you're about to make a friend on your left-hand side here. Two friends, actually. They're coming to say hello to Senzo. They were having their trunks out at one stage, just sort of sniffing at Senzo and seeing who he is and what he's doing. There we go. Senzo, you must say hello back to them. They want to be friends with you. And here comes the rest of the herd. How cool is this? 
<laughs> I mean, Guy Senza is waving to me in the fence. Very cool. We've still got two bulls that are messing around, a couple of the babies at the back end. So lots of Ellie's still to come over the road. It's not just these guys that you see on your side, there's still some deep in the bush as well. It's a little baby that's just grumbling because it wants food, so it's getting it upset because mom is not stopping. And then the typical teenagers having a bit of a go at each other. It's quiet because I want you to hear the sound of the tusks hitting together when these two go together. It's really... There you go, you can hear it, a little bit of knocking. This Ellie on the right has definitely been swimming somewhere, so I think these elephants must have come from Puffles of Dam, which is probably not the best thing, as we were talking about earlier, that lions will be sent scurrying and packing if elephants are around, and if these guys are at Puffles of Dam, I don't think we're going to find any sign of Tinyos still being in that area, unfortunately. So, we'll go and have a look, but I think he might have been pushed along by these Ellies. So I'm going to go back quickly because the rest of the herd has crossed over and they're all just sitting quite close to us. Are you two now having a full game? Maybe they want to keep up with us. There we go. So boys will be boys, as they say. So I'm just going to go back and see if we can't get the rest of the herd crossing in front of us here. So like I was saying, there are quite a number of them because here comes a whole nother section that's about to come over the road as well. I'm sure they're going to join up with these guys and we'll see them all coming. Just want to get a little bit further down. There we go. But they just spread out all in front of us here, slowly but surely approaching to where we are. And they are so relaxed this afternoon. There's been not one sign of aggression. I bar the two playful youngsters in the background there. Everybody else is in super chilled mode. They're feeding and taking it very easy. So, Paul, you're wondering at how many babies can an elephant have and at what age do they become pregnant for the first time? Well, Paul, it's obviously dependent on a number of things, but they will start becoming sexually active at 12 years old. Now, most of the elephants in this particular system will be lucky if they reach um, 50, 55 years. So, generally, they're going to carve every four years. So, what is that? We can say 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. 40, 44, 48. So we're looking at probably between seven, I would say between seven and ten young ones a, in their lifespan, which is quite a number considering that there's not very many predators of elephants within this area. And we're just being overrun by elephants at this stage. We've got them on our left, our right, in front of us. Sorry if my cap gets in the way, I do apologize. I'm trying to hunch down. Then you can see a big female that's just feeding next to us. So she's. on your side. Dixon, who's in Mara FC. Hello, Dixon. And it would be nice to finally meet all of the team in the Mara. I'm sure Senzo sends his hello. Senzo, do you say hello to Dixon as well? There we go, a little thumbs up. And you're saying you're loving this elephant sighting. Well, Dixon, hopefully one day we'll be able to bring you out here to South Africa and you can come and spend some time and see all the Ellies of South Africa up close and personal like this. It's so cool that we have people from two different countries that are, that are enjoying the wilds of their respective country or of the other respective country and are watching and, and seeing and as much as we are in disbelief of what we see in the Mara and, and jealous of the incredible landscapes and the 
crossings and the migration and the cheetah brothers and those kind of things we have our own specialities here and well the elephant herds that are around us and in close proximity are one of those special things and so Dixon I'm glad you're enjoying it and like I say I look forward to meeting you in the future at some point because like I'm not quite sure when I'm going up to the Mara I think it's in October but I know that Taylor will be up there fairly shortly and she's really looking forward to it and she will be back here though first before she goes up to the Mara so don't stress everybody um, but she will be heading up sometime this month and these two are really not letting up on the game <laughs> There's another big female that's coming behind us here. So I'm just going to go back so she too can cross in front of us. In fact, it looks like two young males that are coming this way. No, it's definitely a female and one male. Here she comes. There's a big old girl. You can see it tatty-ish ears, sunken temples. So an old individual. No beautiful girl. And off she goes. Now there's just one bull that's left now on the left hand side of the road that hasn't crossed into Torchwood. The rest are going in deeper and we're going to lose visual of them fairly shortly as they disappear into those thickets. Wonderful. Oh, Cardinal Point. Now this is a a big question and one that's is probably quite interesting. Um, you want to know if elephants that are raised in rehabilitation centres that are re-released are more susceptible to poachers than wild elephants because of their trust in humans. Um, possibly. I don't know if any research has been done on it. Um, knowing the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust in Kenya and the work that they've done and a number of the elephants that they've released they have had some of them that have had poaching incidents but no more than what the wild elephants do and the reason why is because most of those orphans when they are released end up going into wild herds so they go into herds that are aware of humans and try and keep them away the big bulls will join up with um, I mean, the younger bulls will join up with the bigger bulls as Ascaris and follow those around and they learn that humans in certain areas need to be they need to be careful of them and so they try and avoid them so even though they might trust certain people elephants are clever enough to recognize the differences between people and you'll have a situation where they'll know okay this area that I'm in is safe and this area outside of the park or in an area close to the boundaries might not be and they'll be a lot more wary of what's going on there so it's interesting to see and, and I remember at, at David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust that then in Savo East the elephants that had gone wild used to come back towards the stockades and would be very relaxed but outside of that they tended to be a little bit more nervy and wouldn't really be too trusting of what was going on unless it was the guys that had actually worked with them when they were babies and they were able to then recognize voices and varying other things. But our last bull is crossing over the road so we're going to probably carry on and try and see if I can't go and find Tinio while there's still a bit of light and see if there isn't any tracks.